Hi, today this video is about this super cheap £24 on Amazon tender four port PoE. It's actually got five ports, but one of them doesn't do PoE. It comes in this box. Uh, if you rattle the box, it sounds like stuff is rattling around in it because there is pretty much no provision in the underside where the power pack is to stop the power pack just wobbling around. So don't be particularly worried about that. So you get the power pack here, which is a switching power pack model BN031 A65051. Um, it occurs to me I probably should give you the model number of this, which is a TEG. 1105P-4-63W, dash dash which will be 63 watts of uh, power delivery probably over the PoE. Uh, so yeah, back to the power supply, which can take 100 through to 240 volts, and the output is 51 volts at 1.25 amps, in case you need to get a replacement power supply. So yeah, 51 volts, 1.25 amps, with what looks like a fairly generic power connector on the end. The switch itself is a metal box, nothing particularly fantastic about it. It does have wall mount holes, so you can put screws on the wall and mount it. Uh, it looks like the ports will always face downwards when you do that, with the power facing upwards. And it has a switch called Default or VLAN. What that does is put something called port isolation, or normally on uh, other switches is called port isolation, on the first four PoE ports. So port 1, 2, 3 and 4 cannot communicate with devices on the other ports, but they can communicate with any device or any other devices on another switch on port number 5. So quite useful if uh, you wanted to make sure that somebody plugging into this port can't access a VoIP phone on that port or whatever. Um, so it's kind of a feature that's normally provided by managed switches, uh, but in this case it's just a manual switch on the back of that. And then sticker on the underside, just with the same model number on it, and let's give it a go. So here I have a PoE powered telephone or VoIP phone, SIP. Let's plug this stuff in. So if I plug that in and that into there, that lights up. That's the power indicator, and if I plug in something connected to the rest of a LAN, that other light, the yellow light should go on and probably blink with activity, which it does. And uh, I'll leave that plugged in, why not? And I'm going to plug in the VoIP phone, see whether I can do this without blocking the screen and all the other lights that are on this. Let's do port number one. So it's lit up, it's PoE light, which is the top right, and then the Lincoln Activity light. The VoIP phone is in the process of booting up. And we'll also plug in a device which doesn't use PoE, just to see what the lights do for that as well. Let's plug into that one there, and it should just be yeah, that top left orange light to indicate that it has activity, but the top right PoE light for power is not on because this connection is not drawing power. And there you have it really, that's basically a PoE unmanaged switch and gigabit, five ports, four of which can do power, seems reasonable for the price. Uh, we'll have to see 
over the next few years whether it remains reliable. Uh, the thing that I kind of like, I'm going to unplug it now, so here we go, and the, uh, the telephone will go off as well. God, that's got a big capacitor or something in it, it took ages to go off. The thing that I do like about it is that the power, let me get rid of all this junk, sorry, out of the way, be gone with you. Uh, yeah, back to what I was saying. The thing I do like is that the power is a separate power brick here. So it's not mains directly into the switch. Quite often the power supplies in those switches or in switches and, uh, and any other electrical device, the power supply is the first thing that goes wrong. So having an external power supply like this makes it very easy for you to have spares available or to buy a spare fairly short notice uh, should, should this one fail um, and you don't have to swap out the switch. Um, so that's not too bad really. And it's also very chunky power supply. So yeah, it's not like just a generic rubbish, plug it in at the wall, this thing's tiny, really lightweight. This thing is fairly heavy and large enough that the heat dissipation shouldn't be, or it basically shouldn't get too hot, it shouldn't cook itself. Uh, in the description or the comments of this video, in the coming years, I'll let you know whether this has gone wrong or whether I've found any problems or reliability issues with it. But there we go. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.